Okay, so this is following up on our last um, tutorial in which I showed you how to choose a file. Well, we are now going to bring that along to the next step. We are choosing a file, in this case an image, either a JPEG, GIF, or um, PNG. And then we're going to pass the source of that file to this other class, uh, and in particular this um, called examine image, and particularly this method called loom, which is short for luminancy. And we're going to uh, examine the luminancy and return the average luminancy of an image, any image that we select. And so let me just show you how this works. It's not that complicated. You just have to know uh, what to use, though. So we're getting into this method here, the folder, the um, path to the file that we have chosen. I'm creating a new buffered image file called IMG, short for image. And we're creating a uh, file object, which we'll use later. Um, actually, we use that immediately when I talk about. Uh, we create a file from that um, path to uh, our image. And so we create a file out of that. And we just make sure here, you have to use a try catch anytime you're examining. Um, a file or an image like this. And so we do a little test to make sure that this actually is a file. This is a built-in method that you have um, just to make sure everything's working. And then we're going to um, read this in as a buffered image using the imageio.read method. And um, we have a couple of variables that we're going to, four variables we're going to use momentarily. Um, just again, just checking, making sure that image is not null, it's a valid image, and then if it is, we're going to get the width and height, which we need to be able to examine each pixel. Um, that's what we're going to do. I, I just print this out to the screen so you can see what the width and height is. And so based on that, we have a for loop that um, is going to go the width, and then a for, a for loop that's going to go the height. And we will look at each pixel um, using those for loops and using this built-in method called get RGB. And would you have to give the get RGB as a parameter uh, or an X and a Y coordinates, which we are doing here based on our for loop. And then you um, get this int variable that you could use um, this is a formula that I did not come up with, but is um, you can find on Oracle's website. And this, these, these are the four um, bits of information that every pixel holds. Now, this first one um, is a transparency variable. Um, the A is typically the, ver the uh, variable name that you use for that. And that's only going to be relevant if we're using a GIF or a uh, PNG. Because um, JPEGs, JPEGs do not have transparency, so each one will be 255 in that instance. Um, so then you get your red, green, and blue values, which each of these is going to be a variable between um, 0 and 255. And that is uh, because every um, these are considering uh, this is taken in count that you have a 24-bit image, which most of the ones you'll find on the web should be, and then you can, you know, you use um, eight bits or one byte for each of the R, G, and B respectively, and, you know, if, and if you know anything about binary numbers, the highest number that a byte can come up to is 255, and so that's how that works out, um, and so you have the number between zero and 255 to bring up the, the luminancy, actually, of red and green and blue and it's a basically just a combination of them that can make all the colors of the rainbow and all the images that you take with a camera all right so that's that gets uh, broken down here and we examine again this is another one that i found on oracle's website this is just a um i didn't do the math here but this actually works out to give you the luminancy of a pixel and so we're getting the luminancy, and then we're using this average variable to save the luminancy of all the pixels, and then we get an account. And then lastly, we just do a simple average where we you know, divide the total by the count, 
and then we're going to print that to the screen. And you'll, as you'll see, this works very nicely. Um, so I'm going to let me go ahead and choose an image, and I'll show you. So I have some images in this um, folder here. Let me see. Um, so I have a cloud image here, which has a lot of white in it, so that should be a higher luminancy. The brightness should be high. And then that cat image is a dark cat, so that should be a little lower. That's the cat image right there. And the grass is a little darker, too. So if I go to choose, you'll notice that the cloud image should give me a reading. Uh, there's the width and height. And here's the luminancy is 161, which the highest would be 255, right? So a lot of the, um, the blue background is actually not as bright. Um, but if I look at Emma the cat here, you'll see that's a lot lower though at 100 point something. Um, so this is very cool. It's And I'm going to show you in the next video how we can actually even alter these pixels and then rebuild an image, um, almost like creating your own Photoshop filter. So And as always, I'm going to share this code with you. Let me know if you have any questions and please subscribe.